Over 2,000 years ago, ancient Chinese scholars observed the changing patterns in our natural world, the climate, the turning of the seasons, and astronomy. The scholars measured and divided the sun's annual movements into 24 equal parts, creating the 24 solar terms, which were used to govern agriculture in ancient China. Even to this day, this invention still guides the lives and traditions of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. Around the 8th of October, the 17th solar term, the cold dew arrives. The temperature has now cooled down noticeably and the weather is unpredictable. The Chongyang Festival is one of the traditional festivals for Chinese people to respect the old. People climbed the hills and the mountains and prayed for continued blessings. The lotuses of the summer have all withered. Fifteen days after the last solar term, the calendar has moved on to the 17th solar term, named Han Lu. It refers to the cold dew as it condenses and almost becomes frost. However, the colder the weather, the easier it is to build up an appetite. And in this autumn weather, as it starts to cool down, the Chinese have a solution, seeking out a special kind of delicious food. Uh. Shanghai's Chenghuang Temple is packed with people. People come from all over, drawn to Shanghai's local delicacies. These snacks are world famous. The Hanlu Solar Term is all about unmissable flavors. But if you're not around for these few days of feasting, you'll have to wait an entire year to get the chance of luck. There are simply too many people. The store was full a long time ago. Like everyone else who got out of bed at a more reasonable hour, I can only stand outside to taste this legendary dumpling. Soup-filled, finely wrapped dumplings have a long history in China. The dough wrappings are first lightly fermented and then wrapped with the fillings. In these steamed soup dumplings, flour, meat, and soup become one, satisfying the belly and tickling the senses. Crab soup dumplings are the highest form of the art. The crab roe and meat are selected from the most expensive crabs in the market. Mixed with pork, fish, and shrimp, and wrapped in a thin and strong flour wrappings. When steamed, they become crab soup dumplings, a rich soup and the delicate yet complex flavor of crab meat. The reason why crab soup dumplings are unique to this solar term is because their most important ingredient, crabs, are at their plumpest and most succulent when the dew turns cold. Less than an hour's drive from Shanghai is the renowned freshwater Yangcheng Lake. For Chinese food lovers, this place is holy. The creatures that live in here are a cut above those found in any other lake. Hairy crabs are caught once a year during the cold dew solar term. It is a hugely famous annual event. Crab tasting is such a seasonal pastime that every year, when the cold dew solar term comes around, masses of people show up at the Bacheng town on the shores of the Yangcheng Lake to taste the great first catch of the year. In the Bacheng town, many people depend on the hairy crab for a living. 
Zhu Zhi and his father are crab breeders and run a crab farm resort. Be nice, young lady. Okay, Okay. The boss, Mr. Zhu, told me that the Yangchang Lake is mostly less than two meters deep, which means that direct sunlight reaches all the way to the bottom. The lake is full of rushes and reeds, among which hide many forms of aquatic life, providing food for the hairy crabs. Add this to their carefully prepared crab feed, and you'll see how this is just the place for crabs to grow nice and plump. If you take the Zhu family, the cold dew solar term is clearly their busiest time of the year. You can cook crab in so many ways, but a light touch best reflects their freshness and elegant flavor. Satisfying a customer's appetite is ultimately key to the success of a restaurant. Crab is a much loved dish in China. Taste is judged by how original and fresh the flavor is. Whole hairy crab steamed in boiling water, creamy roe full of flavor, crab legs that are tender and sweet. This is what a hairy crab should be like, and the most highly prized taste of the cold dew solar term. But not every crab is perfect, and for those that are too small or might have lost a claw, what can be done? Mr. Zhu cooks them up in a different way. 好的现在就是要清蒸上桌这个这两个, Crab paste is meat and roe extracted from the shell and turned into edible products. It is one of the most important ingredients of many Chinese dishes. For example, the well-known crab-flavored meatballs. The pork is minced, the crab paste is added, and the egg is mixed in evenly. This mixture turns into the large, soft meatballs known by the slightly over-the-top metaphor as lion's head. They're super tasty, but try cramming one of these into your mouth hole. Actually, I'm not a major fan of crab. It's hard to eat, and you get the thinnest amount of meat from it but the Chinese have had a ridiculously long history of indulging on crab, and they've invented ways to make the process clean, tidy, and skillful. This is a bit like a 
是吧？对，好多工具。那我们开始吧。嗯，就是剪刀，剪刀拿起来。对，把脚剪下来。第二步，现在我们把这个放在底托上，然后拿锤子轻轻的敲，把它就是壳敲松一点。嗯嗯、这个叫蟹蝠，然后从这里塞进去。哇，也是。嗯。掰开。对。再把上面的鳃给去掉。嗯。为什么要用这么多工具呢？它每个角角落落，它它都有肉啊。嗯，不用工具的话、嗯、吃不干净，大户人家才会用那么多工具，有钱有闲。是，<笑>吃着螃蟹，嗯，听着昆曲，真的人生美事。Listening to the Kunchu songs while eating crab is one of the most refined customs of the Kolju Solar term, passed on to us by the ancient Chinese. I tend to think of it as if in my hometown in the UK, people would have afternoon tea and talk about Shakespeare. It's such a refined, high culture sort of pastime, but it seems the Chinese are even more particular, adding to the elegant custom a fairly unchangeable natural event. The shift from autumn to winter. So, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 顾卫英 is a professional Kun Chu actor, and she's quite famous in China. Although she's been residing in Beijing for a long time now, she actually comes from Bacheng Town. And for the Cold Dew Solar term, every year she comes back to her hometown to perform. Actually, I was also like this. When I saw the beauty of the stage, the beauty of the costumes, and the costumes, I felt so proud. I was thinking that one day I would be on that stage. 然后呢，我也穿着这些美丽的衣服，哎呦，我也在表演着，就是像做梦一样，就好喜欢那样的一种感觉。嗯The oldest surviving form of opera in China, Kunchu is known as the ancestor of all opera, as well as the world-famous Peking opera. They all came from Kunchu. Intense preparations are underway for the show. Gu Weiying has a leading role. The venue of this year's performance is Yushan Shengjing in the Bacheng town. Legend has it that this was one of Bacheng town's most coveted private gardens. 本来这儿可能是一片田吧。嗯嗯嗯，是，但是在元代的时候，一个儒商叫顾阿英。当时来说是非常有钱的一个商人，嗯，但是呢，他非常有文化，热爱诗词，嗯，他自己也写诗词，嗯，那他呢在这儿建造了一个很大的一片的景，呃，集全国各地的，就是文化人，在这儿雅集。This is a typical Suzhou-style garden, buildings surrounded by a landscaped nature, made to look like a Chinese landscape painting, an idyllic naturescape within the bustling city. A thousand years ago, Chinese intellectuals would pass the day in such a place, spending the cold dew solar term with family and friends.
The singing will begin very soon. Pre-show preparations are very complicated. It takes nearly two hours to get ready, but finally Gu Weiying is about to come on stage.就这么简单就这么简单嗯来昆曲是需要功夫的，一伸手，一迈步就知道你有多少人功力了。Miss Gu will play Ming Dynasty's dramatist Tang Xianzu's Pony Pavilion. It's supposed to be a very beautiful love story, and it reminds me once again of Shakespeare's tragedies. Written far, far away, but in roughly the same literary period, the two dramatists even died in the same year. I have to say, Kun Chu is even harder to understand than Shakespeare's plays. The texts are written as people spoke a thousand years ago. The rhythm and melody is extremely slow. It's hard to understand how, in today's fast-paced society, it attracts such a big audience. Maybe when society develops to a certain stage, some people will want to go back to their roots to discover who they are and where they come from. Cold Yu may not be the most beautiful solar term in terms of nature, but it may well be one that is tied most closely to an overload of sensory experiences. And I was surprised to discover connections between China and the United Kingdom in terms of traditional culture. Whether derived by accident or coincidence, I think traditional culture is a common good, transcending the boundaries between nations and eras, able to outlive us all. <laughs>